So good morning and welcome to Life Science Washington's 14th Annual Life Science Summit. It's a pleasure to be with you today. Joining us today, or soon will be, are several of our public our leaders, public including State Senator Guy Palumbo, representing Washington's first district, Brian Bonlender, director of our State Department of Commerce, and Carl Stickle, Seattle's director, the city of Seattle's director of entrepreneurship and industry. Thank you for making the time to be with us. Your support for our industry is deeply appreciated. Can someone switch, switch in the back so that I, thank you. A big thank you to all of you whose generous support made our summit possible. I want to especially recognize our premier sponsors, Celgene, EY, and Perkins Coons, and our Wi-Fi sponsor, Nanostring Technologies. Please join me in thanking them along with all our networking, coffee break, and table sponsors. I also want to recognize our association's gold, platinum, and chairman circle leader members and thank all of you for your strong support. A gift of our appreciation is on each of your tables. While we always love to come and visit you, we, would, we hope you remember to take it with you when you go. Before I begin my formal remarks, I want to take a moment to recognize the recent loss of a giant in our community. I am referring, of course, to Paul Allen. Paul's vision Spirit of innovation and zeal to tackle an enormous quest for scientific knowledge was unrivaled. He was a risk taker with a can-do attitude who has left an incredible legacy to science and humanity. While we mourn our loss today, today our summit is a time for us to recognize and celebrate the achievements of our members and focus on how we continue to build this wonderful ecosystem of ours. So let's get to it. Did you know we are part of an industry whose total annual impact on the US economy has reached $2 trillion? According to Techonomy Partners' latest report, US bioscience firms employ 1.74 million people in jobs that pay an average wage of $99,000. So how are we doing here in Washington? Setting aside the two giants, California and Massachusetts, Washington continues to rank quite well among states with sizable life science economies. In fact, when it comes to key components of the innovation ecosystem, such as NIH funding and venture capital investments, our state is a top is a former. Those strengths are reflected in NIH funding just shy of $1 billion in 2017 and life science transactions totaling more than $11.5 billion, including three highly successful exits. Even excluding the purchase prices of Juno, Cascadian Therapeutics, and Universal Cells, life science financing in Washington total $880 million over the past year. That's an impressive number. The story of Washington's life science industry, however, is much richer than the one told by our financial transactions. It is the life-saving products and services behind these transactions and their inventors that make our story so powerful. Washington's history of biomedical, impressive history of biomedical innovation is often traced back to Dr. Donald Thomas's pioneering work on bone marrow transplant at Fred Hutch. But did you know that in 1960 at UW, Dr. Belding Scribner invented a Teflon shunt that revolutionized the treatment of kidney failure? He did so by making outpatient dialysis possible. Today, over three million patients are living with a condition that previously would have been fatal. Here are some recent examples from our ecosystem. A 54% efficacy rate in the prevention of pulmonary TB from a new vaccine developed based on Infectious Disease Research Institute technology. 
Imagine preventing 5 million new cases of TB annually and over 700,000 deaths, many of them in children. A 34% survival benefit for patients with an especially aggressive form of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma from the combination of Seattle Genetics, et cetera, and chemotherapy. The company is working on its FDA filing at a fevered pitch so this proven life-saving drug can be brought to all patients in need as soon as possible. FDA clearance for adaptive biotechnologies clonoseq assay to detect and monitor minimal residual disease in patients with multiple myeloma and B-cell acute lymphoblastic leukemia. The launch of a new phase one clinical trial of M3's novel drug designed to halt and possibly even reverse the effects of Alzheimer's disease. Great clinical data on nanostrings technology for identifying biomarkers correlated with treatment response in patients with high-risk melanoma, and on Provencio's simple blood tests for diagnosing cardiovascular disease and predicting adverse heart disease in diabetic patients. With so much great clinical news, is it any surprise that our ecosystem is expanding? Building Cure is on the rise for Seattle Children's Research Institute. Fred Hutch is expanding into the steam plant. Global bi biomanufacturer AGC Biologics has made Bothell its worldwide headquarters and plans to hire hundreds more workers there over the near term. Also in Bothell, Juno Therapeutics, a cell gene company, is massively expanding its CAR-T manufacturing cap capabilities. Huge new buildings under development by Alexandria Real Estate Equities and Biomed Realty demonstrate long-term confidence in our local life science and tech clusters. We are especially excited about Alexandria's newest life science building, 1818 Fairview, which is not only going to be a vibrant and beautiful innovation hub for our industry, but Life Science Washington's new home when it is completed next year. And while Dexter Yard will not break ground until Q1 next year, Biomed's commitment to proceed on this striking new building in South Lake Union without an anchor tenant is a very bullish statement. Fueled by steady investment in STEM infrastructure at our colleges and universities, and the committed engagement of regional partners, the life sciences are growing beyond Western Washington. In Spokane, a VISTA development recently broke ground on the University District Catalyst Building, a 159,000 square foot innovation center anchored by Eastern Washington University's computer science, electrical engineering, and visual communication design programs. With plans to house over 1,000 students, this development will greatly increase the capacity of regional workforce in disciplines very, very related to the life sciences. Over time, the Catalyst Building is expected to be part of a 770,000 acre, I'm sorry, 770 acre, that'd be pretty impressive, <laughs> U District and Bioscience Hub that connects to Spokane's hospital district. With a vision to support entrepreneurs, imagine the possibilities. Life Science Washington has been nurturing entrepreneurs and supporting emerging companies for many years, and we remain committed to this priority. We provide our entrepreneurs with mentoring and consulting services, connections to angel and seed capital, SBIR training, networking opportunities, and online resources, such as our digital playbooks and innovation marketplace. Some of these programs and tools were made possible from grants by the Life Science Discovery Fund, regretfully now in its final days. Last year, we established a charitable nonprofit arm of our association, Life Science Washington Institute, to help us access new sources of funding and engage new partners for our entrepreneurship activities. Led by, led by Dr. Frank Velasquez, former chairman and CEO of PAML, and LSW board member, 
our institute is dedicated to encouraging and supporting the organic growth of life science companies taking these place around the state. We are enthusiastic about emerging opportunities to help regional partners develop their life science assets, not only in East, eastern Washington, but in Vancouver and Tacoma as well. For example, after adding life sciences to its list of strategic industries, the Columbia River Economic Development Council, assisted by a small strategic investment from the state, was able to recruit ABSI to Vancouver in late 2016. At that time, ABSI had 13 employees and occupied 7,200 square feet in downtown Vancouver. Today, ABSI is thriving in Vancouver with 28 employees, whoops, with 28 employees and three open positions and, ex and an expansion underway that will double their space in the same building. Later this morning, we will hear from, from CEO Sean McLean about creative ways the company is preparing their future work workforce in partnership with local schools and WSU Vancouver. In Tacoma, RAIN, the Readiness Acceleration and Innovation Network, just celebrated its one-year anniversary. This nonprofit life science incubator is focused on educating its community to grow jobs, talent, and companies in biotech. We look forward to helping them do so. Of course, with most of our life science startups located in the greater Puget Sound, we will continue to partner with organizations seeking to build a supportive ecosystem for our local entrepreneurs. While there are many of you in the audience for which we are grateful, I want to give a special shout out to the city of Seattle and Carl Stickle in particular for supporting our WIN mentoring program and related consulting services for the past several years. Thank you, Carl. Another of our strategic priorities is to elevate the visibility and stature of the life science industry throughout the state. As you are all aware, despite having a great story to tell, our industry often gets lost or forgotten among the greater tech industry in Washington. One of our goals over the coming year is to change that. This is why I'm excited to tell you about a new PR initiative we launched this summer in partnership with Raffetto Herman Strategic Communications and Strategies 360 to build visibility for Washington's life science industry across the state and nation. Our initiative has two main objectives, to bring the perception of our industry up to date with reality among policy makers and business leaders throughout the state, and to attract more highly skilled professionals to Washington. Through our research, we identified five themes that make Washington's life science industry and ecosystem special. History and momentum. Our state's biotech, med device, and digital health companies have transformed cancer therapy, produced the first treatment for rheumatoid arthritis, and introduced the world to life-saving defibrillators. This dynamic statewide industry is once again on the cusp of introducing a new generation of therapies and cures that will dramatically improve human health worldwide. Pioneering spirit, the same, theme that the same spirit that gave rise to Boeing, Microsoft, Starbucks, and Amazon, and other innovation-driven companies also drives life science growth in Washington State. Ours is an open and collaborative ecosystem full of emerging dynamic companies that support each other and aren't afraid to take risks. Of course, our global impact. Companies in Washington's life science ecosystem have ready access to world-class universities and research institutes. These institutions are forging advancements with a profound global impact working to address epic challenges like eradicating malaria and HIV and beating cancer through remarkable new therapies. Tech convergence. As a renowned tech hub, the Pacific Northwest is home to top-tier talent, specializing in cloud computing, big data, and machine learning. This offers a highly skilled knowledge community and talent pool 
for life science companies seeking to leverage tech to power the next generation of innovation. And last but not least, the Pacific Northwest lifestyle. People who move to Washington stay here because of the family-friendly community, strong schools, abundant jobs, and unparalleled quality of life. We are using these themes to create messages that will allow us to talk about the industry in a way that captures its momentum and unique attributes. We are also developing a PR strategy to collect stories demonstrating momentum that we can share with reporters in Washington and beyond. We know that you are all working on some amazing, life-changing healthcare technologies and treatments, and we want to promote that great work. So if you have a compelling, invented here in Washington story that you want to share, please let us know. Additionally, we are creating a series of videos that capture the excitement for our life science industry. Our goal is to provide video content that can be shared, not just by Life Science Washington, but by you, your employees, and your HR departments via social media with potential employees throughout the country to create a buzz about the great things happening here in Washington. We're also working on a presentation deck that will tell the story of Washington life, the Washington life science industry. Like the videos, the deck will be made available to our members so that all of you can share the impact our industry is having on our state and the world. We look forward to rolling out these PR assets over the next year and are optimistic that working together, we can modernize perceptions of our industry with key audiences in the state and positively impact our talent recruitment efforts. Ensuring our members have access the, to the workers they require to continue growing in Washington is a top strategic priority for our association. And we understand that out-of-state recruitment for specialized talent is a necessity for many of our companies. Our ecosystem simply does not have a sufficient supply of highly skilled and experienced talent to meet the demand. However, even with a great PR campaign, recruiting specialized talent is time consuming and expensive and not a workforce acquisition strategy for the long term. We must do more to attract our own young people into the wonderful careers offered in the life sciences. <laughs> Yay. We have terrific students to work with, from secondary through postgraduate, but too few of them are exposed to opportunities in industry through internships, on-the-job training experiences, or even a survey course that introduces them to life science professions and their impact on human health. Moreover, graduates who exit higher ed with scientific degrees are often unprepared to work in a highly regulated environment. Many of them also lack the soft skills essential to working as part of a team. So how are we going to turn things around and why am I optimistic it can be done? In April, Cascadia President Eric Murray and I convened a day-long Life Science Workforce Summit in Bothell. We were motivated to do so by the steady stream of news from member companies sharing their plans for expansion and searching for more trained workers. Almost 70 people in our regional life science community participated in this summit, including HR and operational leaders from a dozen member companies and educators from seven institutes of higher education, from Bothell to Bellevue. Economic development partners such as Matt Smith from Snohomish Economic Alliance and the Bothell Innovation Partnership Zone were also in the mix, as, with, as was Senator Palumbo. This was a first of its kind gathering, a long overdue conversation in which higher ed administrators, biotech and med device company leaders exchanged fundamental information about their organizations. The colleges described the degrees and certificate programs they offer to life science students, while industry leaders described their product lines and the skills they need most from their job applicants. The discussion was lively and informative, and the feedback was enormously positive. There is clearly an appetite to work together to meet our shared workforce needs. 
However, we quickly appreciated that more in-depth work was needed to identify and, and document what specific education and training gaps prevent students from acquiring the necessary qualifications to work in our industry sectors. Thanks to special funding secured by Senator Palumbo in this year's budget, a national leader in life science workforce education was hired to conduct a detailed study on industry needs versus current educational programs, a gap analysis. After dozens of interviews, intense review of curricula and site visits, the final report was detailed was detailed in its findings and recommendations, laying out a comprehensive roadmap to close identified gaps efficiently with lots of industry guidance along the way. The, the report was delivered to the project steering committee on which I represented our industry in early September and subsequently shared with the six, with the six community college community and technical colleges, and UW Bothell. Since then, leaders of those institutions have met to discuss the findings and begin to lay out an action plan to meet the identified workforce needs of our industry sectors. While still in the formative stages, the plan recognizes the urgent need of our companies for more workers trained in compliance and regulatory skills and notes that this training could potentially begin immediately by taking advantage of existing programs and resources at Everett Community College. The plan also identifies the special capabilities of Lake Washington Institute of Technology in relation to medical device engineering and Bellevue College with respect to nucleic acid and assay applications. And it supports the development of stackable credentials at Shoreline Community College, modifying its biotech program such that it is endorsed by industry. This will give students confidence that their degree programs are well aligned with job recruitments. Life Science Washington is eager to help Shoreline expand its nationally recognized biotech program in this way. In fact, we recently joined the college and Juno Therapeutics, a Celgene company, in applying for a small workforce development grant from the National Institute for Innovation in Manufacturing Biopharmaceuticals, also known as NIMBLE, to support this effort. We are optimistic about the grant, but no, either way, this important work will continue thanks to Celgene's support and anticipated participation from other local biomanufacturers. While much work remains to be done, we are making great progress on our workforce development initiative. I think the greatest challenge to quickly ramping up industry-relevant life, life science programs at our institutes of higher ed is ensuring strong industry involvement with all of these institutions as they work to meet our needs. It is essential that representatives from med device, biomanufacturing, and biotech companies participate in this process. Our higher ed institutions will need your time, expertise, and guidance as they work to fully examine and modify specific courses and majors so they are aligned with the jobs of today and, and the jobs of tomorrow. Our work to build the supply of well-trained workers for all our industry sectors is dovetailing perfectly with a broader statewide effort to improve career-connected learning for K-12 students in, our, in the state. The goal of Career Connect Washington is to increase the percentage of high school students who achieve a post-secondary credential from today's 40% to 70% by 2030 with a significant focus on STEM and other high demand jobs. Yesterday, Governor Inslee received a comprehensive strategic plan to achieve this goal. Over 3,000 Washingtonians helped develop the plan with business leadership provided by industry association executives and company CEOs. Former Juno CEO and now Celgene board member, Hans Bishop, and I were active participants active participants in the process, and we support the plan enthusiastically. Work is already underway with Life Science Washington member companies 
to develop programs that will expose, prepare, and help launch young Washingtonians into the wonderful jobs that exist in our industry today and the new ones that will evolve with tomorrow's innovation. You're going to hear from some of the champions of these workforce development activities in our panel discussion later this morning. As you listen, please be thinking about how you or someone or someones from your organization can participate. 